All right, Coach, so much ground to cover from NCAAs. Uh, let's start on the men's side. 15th overall, the highest finish that's happened since you've been the head coach here. Uh, a slew of guys were all Americans. You brought 10 people, which I'm pretty sure is the biggest group mm -hmm. that you've had on the men's side since you've been the head coach. Uh, overall, you got to be incredibly proud of, of what you guys were able to accomplish this season men's-wise. Absolutely. Um, when we started the season, uh, we sat down as a team and, and talked about where we wanted the program to go and uh, how we wanted the process to kind of unfold throughout the year. And, you know, there were – throughout the season, there's always going to be highs and there are always going to be lows and you're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days and um, – you just kind of have to stay the course. And, and I thought uh, our staff did a, a great job with this group of, of men of keeping them focused on the end goal. Um, we went to, to SECs this year. We had a very good SECs, a very solid SECs, but uh, the, the, the coaches knew that there were more in the tank. There, there was more that we could do at, at NCAA. So as soon as we finished with SECs, we started talking to these guys about the times that they could go and how fast they could go. Um, that being said, they exceeded our expectations. Uh, as fast as we thought they could be, um, even with a very good SECs, they went well above that. So um, we were very proud of them. And we knew on the first night, you know, we talked a lot. We got out there. Um, Coach Bernardino and Coach Mullins took the men out on Monday. Coach Swander and I came out on Tuesday uh, because we had just returned from the women's meet. We had, a, we had a, you know, just a small meeting when we got out there and kind of said, you know what, that, that eight free relay is going to set the tone. You guys got to get out there and you got to get it done. Well, they got up on the blocks and not only did they get it done, but they lowered our school record by three seconds almost. I think it was like a drop of 2.8 um, and, and, and put points up. And we went into that race ranked 22nd in the country and, uh, and finished up putting, putting great points up on the board for our program and got us off to a great start. Next morning, you hop up in the 500 free and um, Finn Maneuth and Akram Mahmoud lay the two fastest times down in the country and go into finals seated one and two. Um, at that point, uh, everybody, everybody that follows NCAA swimming knew that our men had come to play that week. And the confidence level within the group was really high. Um, and, and they knew that every race they stepped up on the block, they were, they were swimming for their teammates and they were representing the University of South Carolina. And you, we talked a lot about um, the snowball rolling, momentum rolling, and, and one race you know, building into the next, into the next, into the next, and it really did. Every race got better for us. Uh, and it just, you know, that final night was, was a huge night for our program. And, uh, but it, it was fun, you know, talking. Uh, we can break down individual races, but... Those guys as a group, they're one of the closest group that I've ever had the opportunity to work with. They're one of the most driven groups that I've ever had the opportunity to work with. They want to be great. They, they don't want to just be another Gamecock swimmer. They want to, they want to stand out. And, and that's, that's what makes uh, these men elite. So uh, it, was, it was a great week and with a, with a lot of great races. Women's side, you had Emma break a school record in one event and get her first All-American, and you also had uh, Allison Need uh, pull in a, an All-America as well, uh, as, as, along with some other good performances. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to see Emma's progress, because when we sat here last year, that, that was the goal that you laid yeah. out for her, was to make some second swims and to be an All-American. Uh, you got to be super proud of her and, and the entire women's team. Our women made great progress this year. Absolutely wonderful. You know, last year we went to NCAAs and um, we had a couple of young ladies there on the swimming side that did not score. Uh, the divers knocked it out of the park last year. And you, you can't rely on that every year. You can't rely on what our divers did last year. What they did last year was phenomenal. And, and we can't, um, you know, we can't rest on that fact. So one thing we had talked about was being able to put points on the board from the swimming and the diving side. So the progress we made this year was that we did that. We did just that. Um, Emma came in, uh, had a really good 200 IM on the first day and just missed making um, the, the B final. She finished 17th place, um, which there's, there's, it's, it's hard to get more painful than a 17th place finish at NCAAs. Um, but I sat down with her afterwards and Coach Swander sat down with her and we basically said, look, your 400 IM is your event. That's what 
Um, we have been focusing on all year long, and that was still to come. The next day she got in, knocked it out of the park. Um, All-American honors in the 400 IM, put points on the board from a swimming side. Uh, and then Kirsten Durain had a great meet as well, swim, swim a, really, a lifetime best in her 100 breaststroke. And, uh, and then both of them on the last day had, had solid 200s. So great, great run for our swimmers. Allison Nee did it again on the platform. Uh, the, the irony of that and what makes Allison so impressive as a diver is her, her, most, um, her best board, her best event, um, is a 10-meter tower, and we don't have a 10-meter tower here to train on. Uh, it, it's, it's the one thing about our facility that we're lacking in terms of um, being able to execute what we need for a great event at NCAAs. They have to travel to practice this, and so um, Todd Sherritt does an outstanding job with our divers. The fact that you can put someone uh, in the top 16 divers in the nation on a board that we don't actually have here to train is unbelievable. Um, you know, it, it would be it would be the it would be the the same as having our track team place top ten in the country without having a track to run on. It just it's it's almost impossible to do. So um, the divers did a great job. But it was an outstanding meet for our women's meet. We've got to move forward now. The goal is to kind of start to put some relays in the meet and, and bump into that top twenty five spot where I know we can be. Uh, last year, you talked about Finn Maneuth as a candidate to really break out and, and do big things in his second season. And, and that was after uh, an SEC's where I think he swam in a couple C finals and then an NCAA where he was in the relay, but, but nothing individual. And, uh, and he turned you into a prophet between his SEC championship and then laying down the fastest prelims time at NCAA's in the 500 and, and finishing, I believe it was fifth overall in that event. Uh, what was it that you saw in Finn last year that, that let you know he was capable of that kind of breakout performance? And then who on the, the team uh, you know, might, might have that capability for next season? You know, I, I, think, um, I, I think what we saw in Finn was the environment. And what I mean by that is um, he, he trains with Tom and Akram and Cody, and, and those guys never take a day off. They, they, they're always 100% focused. And so he's in that environment. The expectation is we're going to be the best in our events. That's the expectation. So Finn came in and bought into that. But I think what, what was easy to project about Finn was he, 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 never, he will never deviate from the plan. So, so our distance coach, Mark Bernardino, whatever Mark says to do, Finn does it, just um, without question. If we're in the weight room, whatever Coach Josh Morgan says to do, Finn does it. He won't do one rep more. He won't do one rep less. He will not do one pound more than Josh is going to tell him because that's the plan. Finn follows the plan. And so knowing that, we, we know what the plans we, – we know how the plan will play out because we've done it before uh, as coaches. But having someone who will lock on to that and put the work in – um, you know they're going to be to be great. Now, did we see a 409 coming in that 500? Maybe I would love to say yes, without a doubt. I knew it was going to drop, but you know, no, I I was really happy with 411 at SEC. So, um, you know, I, I think it was easy to to look at Finn and say he's going to do great things because of the guys that he surrounds himself with and because of the work ethic that he has. It wasn't hard. That wasn't a stretch for us. That wasn't something where I was trying to really go out on a limb and make some big statement. That, that, you know, that was a pretty easy thing. As far as guys coming down the pipeline that I think can do this, um, you know, I, I think maybe not a freshman, but a young man who had an outstanding year was Jack Smith. Um, Jack is a guy who I think has a confidence about him right now because of the amount of time that he dropped. Uh, Jack had never been under 352 in a 400 IM, and at SECs he went 345. Um, went at 145 and for a brief time broke our 200 IM school record uh, until Finn broke, or until, uh, sorry, until Niels Witt Glossen broke it that night in the 200 IM. Uh, also had a great 200 fly. Jack is a guy that I think if he can stay the course, stay focused, and, and kind of um, be. Um, be the type of trainer that some of these guys that you've seen before are, uh, he'll, he'll be their scoring points next year. And, and the, the great thing about it is when, when you see them kind of, when you see the light bulb come on, and that's what we've seen with Jack in the last few weeks, when you see that light bulb come on and they get a taste of, of being at that meet. And Jack was at NCAAs with us. He wasn't able to compete, but he was an alternate that I took with him for the very reason that I want him in that environment because I believe he's going to be back next year. Uh, and I don't want any sort of shell-shocked performance when we get there. I want him to used to the feeling. Um, I, I think he's a guy that can make a big impact, and we're going to need him to. 
Uh, he's going to have to stretch his limits a little bit and, and maybe perform on some relays and things that are out of his comfort zone, but I think he's capable of doing that. And on the women's side, last year when we did our postseason recap, you mentioned Kirsten, mm-hmm. and you were right about that one too. We, we might have to get Matt to dig up the video to, to <laughs> prove your Nostradamus over here, but but you said that Kirsten was somebody that could break out this season and, and make it to NCAAs, and, and she did. And so I know you've got a lot of candidates on the women's side that you're looking to take that next step as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, Kirsten is one. I, I think they're establishing themselves as leaders within the within the program. Um, another young lady. Uh, well, when, when you look at Kirsten, it, it, again, it's, it's not hard to make these predictions as a coach. They make us look very smart, but it's not hard when you see on a daily basis the work that they put in. Um, a lot of these young people, um, young men and women, come in and, and they see what it takes to be elite and they make a complete lifestyle change. Uh, I mean, uh, taking care of their bodies from a recovery standpoint, from uh, a nutrition standpoint, they, they do what their coaches say, they follow the plan, and they buy into the process. This is not a hard prediction for, for me as a head coach here. Like, I, 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 I see this coming. Um, and so watching Kirsten make those changes and, uh, and, and be able to progress like she has is not a shock. You know, she had a great summer. She made Olympic trials um, in, in, her, in her breaststrokes or 200 breaststrokes. So th- these were things that we knew she had in her. Um, as far as somebody that I believe can make this next step for next year, I think Heather Merritt has the opportunity to, to make NCAAs and be a contributing factor there. Uh, she made a huge jump this year. I, I think we finally found the right training environment for her to, to match her personality. Um, and, and she had a great year, dropped a ton of time in the 500, had a great SEC, scored points in her events. So we're, we're right on that verge of you know, getting that women, our women to be a, a mainstay in the top 25. And, and, and our men, are, are, they're going to be top 10. Our men, our men can do this, and they can do it sooner rather than later. We have the tools in place. Um, every, uh, I got a couple more for you. You know, every, w- one of the things that, that has really impressed me about your sport being such a year round uh, deal, not just collegiately, but also, uh, what your kids do internationally and in club swimming and, and, and that sort of stuff is you always have another goal. You never end an event without immediately having another goal and another mm-hmm. event to prepare for. So I know that next year's SECs are uh, 11 months away and next year's NCAAs are 12 months away, but but you've got goals between now sure. and then for your program that, that you want to accomplish before you're back on that big stage collegiately. Talk about those. Well, yeah, I mean, you, you have – our sport is different in that, um, you know, unlike basketball, unlike football, uh, they have a very defined season. Now, that doesn't mean they ever st- stop working, but they do come out of competition. Um, with swimming, we don't. Uh, a lot of our biggest competitions are in the summertime. Uh, so what we have moving forward, I mean, obviously, Akram had a lot of success last year in Rio. Uh, Julia Vincent competed in Rio last year and, and did a great job. So we do have a plan moving forward. And it's honestly, it's a big part of our plan in terms of, you know, when I throw around things like top 10, um, that doesn't mean we start back up in August and hope for the best moving forward. There's a very strategic layout to get to next August. And so some of the things we have on our plate right now, Akram Mahmoud is going to be going uh, to world championships uh, in Budapest, and he's going to race there. And, and to be honest, he's got big goals. We have big goals for him. You know, you, you, we all know he swam under, under the American record uh, in the 1650 this past weekend. That American record was held by the man who won the bronze medal in Rio in the 1500. And we just went faster than he did. So there's absolutely no reason for us not to look at this and go, we can come home from Worlds with a, with a medal. And if you can do that, then, then you're going you're gonna to set yourself up for an Olympic medal. And, and from the day that we started talking to Akram, that was the goal. Like, I want an, he wants an Olympic medal. And so that's, that's what we're pushing for him. Um, on, on another scale, we have world championship trials for the U.S. athletes. Uh, they're going to be going to that and racing for spots there, not just for world championships, but also for world university games, which a lot of our athletes have a very realistic shot of making. Emma Barksdale could make the U.S. team. Uh, Cody Beckemeyer has a good shot at making a U.S. team uh, for World University Games. And, uh, you know, a lot of these guys uh, that we have, Finn Maneuth could be a world use swimmer for, for Germany. Uh, Niels Wiglossen could be a world use swimmer for Germany. So these are goals. And we, we, we kind of set those, 
we dangle that carrot in front of them with, you know, we, we want them to represent their country whether it's at world championships, to be on a national team is a huge accomplishment. And we've had a lot of success with that. We, Tom Parabonio has represented Ecuador uh, at, at the, the Pan Pacific Championships. And, um, you know, so we've been on that stage. And I, I think that is something that's very appeal appealing to our, our recruits that we're looking at. The fact that we can promise them a big stage to perform on year round is a, is a good thing for our program. So uh, it is a very methodical process. There is a lot of thought that goes into it. Our coaching staff sits down and tries to lay out the best path for our athletes to be successful. And so if we're going to shoot for top 10 and top 25 for our women next year, top 10 for our men, there needs to be a very clear plan. Those are big goals, but uh, you guys have certainly been building to them, and they certainly seem like they're realistic. Coach, uh, congratulations on what you did the last couple of weeks at NCAAs, and best of luck moving forward. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.